Hi, welcome back. Right, my name is David Blissett and in this video we're going to be having a look at Unreal Engines for offering for AI, the workflow, and how I managed to get uh, these players to run around and essentially follow this character here uh, wherever he goes. All right, so uh, without ado, let's get into it. So having a bit of fun um, with Unreal 4 uh, and, and trying to get through its workflow as far as you know uh, getting NPCs characters to work with the uh, navigation mesh uh, that you set up within the environment so that the NPCs will know how to do whatever artificial intelligence um, you're setting up your character to do so let's just go ahead and get rid of nav mesh for the time being and drill into this so this is the the player and these are the two NPCs right um, in terms of actually, uh, let's just source the character now. Uh, go through here. So we've got this folder called AI with NPCs, right? So there's a, those are the two NPCs, and obviously the main player is already set up, right? The only thing that we need to do on the main player is actually get the um, the perception configured so that the NPCs will know what to do. So here the there is a AI perception stimuli source that's been configured and on there uh, it's been set up to have sight as the source so the NPCs are going to be if they can see based on a radius um, the actual player then they're going to take the target location and go towards it so how do we set that up right so we've got three things here We've got the AI controller, we've got the behavioral tree, and then we've got the actual dashboard or the blackboard, sorry, which has been configured uh, with variables and it's like a, a kind of handshake principle. So you put the variables on the blackboard and then there will be different components or tasks that are essentially either setting or reading those values, right? And then within the behavioral tree, we're actually using that data. So the, the, the general idea here is that we've got the root, we've got the selector. Um, essentially, you only can have one branch coming off the roof, right? Uh, you can have multiple branches coming off the selector, and then you can have multiple branches that come off the, um, the, the actual sequence, and they are executed in a left to right order. Right, so if I was to move this group here, so right now this is set up as six, right? If I was to move this, so now that's been set to one. So before it was six because it was on the right hand side of this sequence. But let's just get this back before we break something, right? Just try and keep focused on what we're trying to talk through. So essentially, within this sequence here, we've got this principle of a decorator. And within the decorator, we can set conditions which get evaluated to see whether or not this sequence will get played through. So at the moment, there is a, a variable that's been configured on the actual uh, blackboard itself. So there's a blackboard and I can go over here and look on that directly. I've got three variables. I've got target location, player location and a boolean value to see whether or not uh, the player is visible, right? So this is a boolean value, right? If I come back here, um, I then have what we call task. The task can either be an Unreal Engine 4 default task, like move to and wait, and it can also be a user default task, which is kind of like an event, but let's just drill into it. So here we're calling this specific one find actors location, right? Um, the, the basic principle is that you have two things that you must configure when you're using this specific type of event graph. Event received execute AI or finish execute, right? Um, within this specific one, we're trying to figure out what the actual player's location is. So we get the player character, it asks for its location, we are searching within a radius of 270 degrees to find out whether or not this specific player is in, 
in this uh, radii, right? Um, and then from here, so it says get random point in navigation mesh radius, right? Um, and that's the radius value that we've set. From there, we're now assigning that to the variable on the blackboard. So again, we're gonna go back to the blackboard here, and this is the target location that we're setting in this instant, right? So target vector, set blackboard value, finish your process and make sure you have the tick value being um, updated, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go back over to the, the behavioral tree and kind of work through that, continue working through that workflow. So we find an actor's location. We then move to, which is a Unreal Engine 4 uh, task. So if I come in here, these are the tasks that you can do by default. Or you could go ahead and you could create a new task. Notice these custom tasks here have names that have been assigned and I'm currently using, i.e. chase player and find actor's location. Find the actor's location, chase the player, right? Okay, so let's go over here and see what's taking place again. So we're still evaluating on that specific flag. It could be any flag that you've set, but in this particular scenario, here we're saying if it's not set or if it's false, then go ahead and do this. Otherwise, in this instance, it has been set. We're evaluating the same uh, variable on the blackboard and then we're coming through, and then these will all fire in, in, in the sequence, right? So this one and this one and this one. Is this linear in, in terms of how it's been set up and the order here, right? Um, so chase player. So here again, we get the player's location because you need to know where the player is. We, we get the actual vector that's coming off from there. Again, we have a radius here of 100. Uh, I'm just doing a bit of debugging, so just to make sure I was having some problems initially, but just wanted to make sure that it was getting a true value. Um, and then this is the variable. So the, the variable is declared here, but it's not just any type of variable. It's a blackboard value that's being set, right? So it's almost like a pointer to the blackboard more than anything else. But we're saying take this value and put it on the blackboard at that player location, right? And then from there, uh, I do a bit of debugging and then we finish and we make sure to set that, that flag. Remember, whenever you're setting up your task, you these two events must be a part of the mix. Event receive execute AI and finish execute AI, right? So that said, We've now completed that part of the walkthrough. Now we're gonna go and have a look and see what we were doing as far as actually making sure we have that glue between NPCs and the actual player. So remember earlier I mentioned that you have this perception uh, that's being configured. So this is the perception that's gonna be configured on the actual AI character themselves, i.e. the NPC, right? So in this instance, we're saying on target ex perception update, i.e. we perceive or the, the NPC perceives whatever you tell it to perceive. So right now we're, we're only studying whether or not we have the site, the AI site configuration. And within here, we have to set these flags. Well, we don't have to set all these flags, but we are just for the demo, right? So whether or not it's an enemy, whether or not it's a neutral or it's a friendly. Just think about game development as you're seeing that. And then there's these other parameters that can be configured, but that's all being configured under site configuration, okay? So that event gets um, triggered by the game or the workflow execution, whatever it is that you're trying to do while setting up your AI. And then we essentially break out the stimulus. So again, the stimulus or perception, this is what we're working with, right? So we've got the age, expiration, strength, so on and so forth. But really what we want to do is know whether or not we've got a true false um, flat. Actually, we, we want, it specifically needs to be true in order to get this process going. Um, we're doing a cast on third person character, i.e. the player, 
right? Um, we get the object and then that passes through in terms of the workflow, the execution, right? Um, the get blackboard is so that we can actually send data to the blackboard. And in this instance here, we're actually giving the name as a string to say, look for this on the blackboard, right? And set the value, the Boolean value here, right? With whatever uh, value that's been come through based on this event. So uh, technically it should all really make sense, but uh, this is what's taking place in the central AI controller. Where is it that we're actually um, using this? Well, let's go over to the actual MPC, the two places. So if I look on this MPC here, and I go in and I just want to have a look on this blueprint. Notice, there's nothing that's special about this, but this specific MPC does have an AI controller, which is essentially bringing that behavior to the NPC. That's why the NPC is moving around the level. One, it's got the navigation mesh, and two, it's got that AI controller, which is the, the one that I was showing you a while ago. The other thing uh, that, that's been configured in this setup is, uh, so this is the, the actual player themselves, right? Themselves, as though it's real, right? So for the player, we have the AI perception similar source. Essentially, it's like it's been given a bit of meat and the hounds are chasing them, right? Um, and in this particular scenario, again, I've got the AI perception with the stimuli source. I come in here and I'm saying, set this up for sight. So think of this as the, the meat that the dogs are chasing, right? So it's what is it sensing? And right now it's sensing based on sight. There are other stimuli, so touch, you know, um, prediction, hearing, damage. So somebody's thrown a bottle and it's within the radius. You know, you play the sound and this is, or it stepped on a bottle and it's, oh, right, I know where this is. And you now have a, a location to go to, something along that line. So that's that's the, the, the essentially it. That's how it's been configured. And so by playing it through now, Straight away, these guys, because I'm in their sensory range, based on those um, parameters that have been configured earlier, they can see me, right? Now, if you notice, the, the we're printing out the location only when they actually are in that specific range. They're actually seeing us, right? So the event's firing. Um, now, right now they're, they're starting and stopping and the reason for that is we've got that weight, right? So uh, I can come in here and I can go ahead and let's just go over here and let's go ahead and say there's no wait time, right? So if you notice, they were running towards me and then stopping. So, well, they're going to stop now because they actually follow me, but if I come in here now, it's almost like they, they, there's a bit more fluidity, or there should be at least. Don't forget, the whole principle is that we want them to follow me. So it's almost like they're stalking me at this point, right? So that's it, guys. Essentially, if you want to be able to get some basic movement going, utilizing uh, Unreal Engine for AI workflow, that's essentially the, the, the foundation that you're going to want to play with. You're going to need to set up your AI controller, your behavioral trees, your blackboard to, to be that glue between your task and whatever is evaluating those values. Get your MPC players and make sure you configure your navigation mesh. Um, you know, obviously you're going to tweak it a lot more than this, but that's how you go about making your setup. And again, don't forget, your sensors or your perceptions need to be configured, both the source and whoever is actually interpreting that source. So you don't set up the, the AI perception directly on the MPC. You set up the, um, the, the perception at the actual, um, at the AI level, the AI controller level. And then, you know, based on whatever it is that you, you want 
to be the target for that. So in this instance, um, that this is the player, and on the player there is a, an actual um, AI perception source, or uh, stimuli source that gets configured, and then you can go in there and tag on the necessary um, value to drive that stimuli source. All right. I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, um, feel free to uh, leave a comment, a like, and if you've not subscribed, please go ahead. We'll be um, making sure to get out more gaming content uh, to you soon. All right. Thanks again for watching.